Hey world, this is Sean. Uh, I'm just here in my backyard. I just got done mowing and watching a fire burn down and just been thinking about a video for a while just about why I hold to uh, my strong view of God's Word. That no, not only do I believe it's got inspired by God, but that it's authoritative. That all of God's Word is breathed by Him and should speak to our lives and how we connect, how we live, and have our being. Is I just see among a lot of um, people and a lot, especially youth, just some biblical ignorance out there. Um, a couple of years ago in the class, we asked um, a question related to a novel that had an evil tree in it, and relating it to like the Bible and kids couldn't tell us about Adam and Eve and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Like it's just shocking. In previous years, kids immediately got that inference and that connection. And that particular, at least that particular year, didn't and just so many more adults and young um, people who believe that part of God's word is inspired. They value the word, but yet they don't believe all of it is. So they'll choose what they think is right and leave out the rest. They'll set that aside because that was the portion that was written by man. And that is such a dangerous view. Um, I didn't go to church. I didn't grow up in the church. I think it was like middle school that I started going back to church. And that's because my mom asked us a question and we like, what, what is Easter about? And we didn't know. And anyway, the Holy Spirit convicted her and she realized we did not know anything about God. Well, we started going to church. I rebelled. I hated it. I thought it was dumb. Uh, but by high school, my freshman year, I was like, I thought I was a Christian because I went to church, but yet I was in every sin. I never read my word. I actually prayed three times a day um, because God was a gimme God. If you do this for me, God, I will do this. And I was in, um, he answered enough prayers that I, or at least I thought he did, that I would pray three times a day till I was 21 years old. And I kept that as best as I could. Um, most of those prayers were, yep, I'm checking in, God. It's about that time. All right, I'm done. And but nothing of my life was actually governed by God or living for him. Well, it was right before my sophomore year of high school that I had an encounter with the Lord, and that rocked my world. It changed everything. Hey, Cooper. That's my dog, Cooper. He's coming. You want to get on this video? Come here. Come on, say hello. Say it. No, no. Say hi. This is my Cooper. He's going to join us, I guess. Yep. So, anywho, when... I got actually born again. I used to, because I was thinking, I go to church, I should read my Bible. And I would try, I opened the book of Revelations and didn't understand a thing. I'm like, well, that was weird. Shut it. Had no inspiration to continue reading it. And I did, went through the motions. If you asked me by the time before my sophomore year, I would say, yeah, sure, I'm a Christian. I go to church. But I wasn't born again until I encountered the Lord and I gave my life to Him. When I gave my life to Him, it was like, it, there was no more playing games. Like I wanted to live for God. And when I looked at the word of God, I was, I even remember saying to myself, this is either the word of God or it's not the word of God. And if it's not the word of God, it's not worth living for. And this is a fraud. And to this day, I'm now 36. Dana will correct me on my age because I have no idea. Um, and to this day, the word of God is still inspirational, still encourages me, still strengthens me. The Word of God is either His Word or it's not His Word. It is either um, a high value or we have a low value. There is no middle ground. And if we just take portions of the Word of God and we make it apply to what we want, we don't take it as face value when we, while, when we can, we are in a dangerous position of creating a God in our own image. There's many scriptures, New Testament and Old Testament, that speak to our lives and even govern how we should live. And it's not my job to be like, mm, no, I don't think God, Jesus is right when the directive is clear. It's my heart isn't right. And it's like, Lord, help me in my weakness to align with you. And when there's scripture is... Um, and. It's not just a moral book. Like that is, I think, sometimes many people get caught up in, especially in our today's culture, where people use the Word of God to justify all sorts of insanity that don't really go with God's Word. But then 
you have the other side is like, no, according to the word. And people are like, well, you're just being legalistic. And it's like, no, there is a place where there's morality. But the word of God is so much bigger that Jesus came to reveal the Father. And he says in um, John that if you believe in me as the scriptures speak out from your belly shall flow living water. It's as we meditate on his word and we encounter him through his word that he brings it to life and it's transformational. I love the word of God because it's the platform for encounter with his nature and his character. But yet he doesn't suspend his character and he doesn't suspend his nature in one area. So this one other attribute, the one we always hear about is God is love, which is true. But he doesn't suspend everything else to be a God of love. It's all true. And if we only have one aspect of God and we're taking it out of context, do we have a God according to his word where the spirit of God flows in our life or do we have a God based off of our own desires? And again, I just come back to either the God of the Bible and his word is inspired by him or it's not. And if it's not inspired by him, then why are we wasting time? Um, and I wholeheartedly believe that it is. I believe that the word of God is authoritative and I believe it's by which we live and have our being. That those who are choosing to pick what they want and only are going by memes and these little snippets or, only, or not even just picking people out that are doing craziness in our culture, just in the church and just allowing our pastors to do all of our thinking for us. Like that is so dangerous. God didn't die so people can fill up on pews and seats just so they can hear another man speak. He wants relationship. He wants to open up his word. And so I just encourage you to take the time, get in his word, make time for it. If you're struggling with it, get with somebody else and like say, hey, talk to them about the word of God. I like to call it the veil of boredom. There's sometimes this veil where it's like, oh, I'm just putting, there's this struggle. And I've gone through that struggle many of times in my walk, but I've as persevered, pushed through that struggle. And suddenly in a moment it breaks. And then it's like the word of God is alive again. It's like the Lord is testing. Maybe it's not, this is just how I perceive it. It's just testing, seeing are you hungry? Are you going to come and pursue me? Are you going to push through? Are you just going for the through the emotions of things? And so seasons where it's all amazing and seasons where it's like, man, I'm not feeling like I, anything's being inspirational. It doesn't matter. Get, set your heart. Set your heart. Seek the Lord. Pursue the Lord with all of your strength, all of your might. Love him regardless of what it feels like. And in the end, it's so worth it. In the end, it doesn't matter what man does. It doesn't matter what man laws man passes. We will stand before him. And I don't believe that he's just, or at least this is not my aim. I don't want him just to say, well done, faith, good and faithful servant. Like, that would be awesome. Like, he says anything positive to me, I'm going to be like stoked. But what I want him to say is you love me and you love me well. You can't do that apart from pursuing and connecting. That's the word. That's prayer. That's worship, putting them all together. And anyway, I just wanted to share, since I was born again, this has been my view. And any issue that if uh, for persons listening to this and you know you don't agree with me on things, I welcome you. Hey, the sun went down and my, everything went black. Now, So I'm closing up. And now it got bright. Weird. Um, if you are one of my friends or just find this video and you don't agree with me on things, I welcome a conversation. But I'll just say this. I cannot and I will not change my mind on anything unless you can show me in the word. If you can show me in the word where I am wrong, I'll be happy to repent. I'll be happy to be like, oh my goodness. And maybe I won't do it in that moment, but I'll like, I'm going to have to search this out. But I, anything I post, I welcome conversation. You don't have to agree with me, and that's okay. But on this one thing, I can't compromise. The Word of God is what it is, and it speaks to all things. So get into it. Love it. Devote it. Psalms 1. Love you. Bye.